For in Jesus' name we are praying. Let us sing that song again. I will declare you are the only God. The only God. The only God. I will declare you are the only God. The only God I know. Sing, I will declare. I will declare you are the only you are the only God the only God I will declare I will declare you are the only God the only God I know I will declare Only God, only God, only God, I will declare you are the only God, the only God I know. Amen. Indeed, God is with us this morning as he has always been. I mean, as my wife said, it's like everything is just flowing into one another. Um, when Pastor Bumi informed me that I'll be ministering uh, this Sunday, I started trusting God. What am I going to talk about? What do you want to talk to your people? Boy, it was a real struggle, but at the last tail end of it, it kept being impressed on my heart. First Kings chapter 18. And that was where Elijah made a challenge to the children of Israel. If God be God, then serve him. If it is Baal, then serve him. Meaning they had to make a choice. But we have been professing all morning, I believe you are the only God which is just in line with the declaration that God is expecting us to make for this year. If indeed God is God in your life, in this 2022, if he's the only God, as the last song we sang said, then don't have a plan B. Don't rely on an alternative. Ah, how do you say taku in English? Anybody who understands Yoruba to that level, Pastor K, I know you are deep. You died there. You know, there is a saying in my language, Yoruba language, say, Otaku like I say, God, I abandon myself in your neck. If you kill me, kill me. If I will leave, leave. No other bus stop. You are my last bus stop. My little time on earth, don't let my shape and future fool you. I'll be 52 in August, so I've seen some calendars. At least I've gone past the halfway mark. <laughs> in this little time in life, I've had situations in my life, and many of them actually, because I'm this very carambulous and cantankerous person. I always get in trouble. And I've gotten in some troubles in this life that bought for God. Tell somebody, bought for God. I don't know if you can relate. Where you get to that cul-de-sac, you get to that alley that you look left, no way, right, no way, front, you can't jump the fence. Behind you, like we say back in Nigeria, police dogs are coming. <laughs> you know where that supernatural strength comes? A gutter that naturally you could not jump. A wall that naturally you could not climb. All of a sudden, when you are caught in a corner, some kind of supernatural force, it seems, is propelling you upwards to jump that wall. You know how you jump some walls and you look back and like, wow, did I just do that? Who has been in that kind of situation? That is what God is laying in my heart, that this year, for as many of us 
who with tacuology, like just abandon yourself in God's hand. Abandon yourself in God's hand. Say, God, I am your property. Whatever you like, do with me this year. If I succeed, glory be to your name. If I fail, it's all to your name. You know that kind of situation where you draw a line and you challenge God and say, God, over to you. I'm not even struggling anymore. You, you know, there's a point you get to and say, I'm not doing anything anymore. I don't know how to drive home because I want you to be attentive. This message, what you are going to take home from it is what I'm saying in the introduction. The rest is just to try and buttress it. But do you get the point I'm making that this year, you need to make a determination. If God is God, then serve him and trust him. But if you do not believe he is God, don't waste your time. There's no point wasting our time. Right now, we are fasting for 50 days. Today is day 12 or 13, those who are following. 13, day 13. Why would you not have enjoyed the meals for the past 13 days? And I know many of you have added other programs into it. Maybe your own is 30 minutes worship every midnight. For some people, it is one hour prayer every midnight. People are doing a lot of things like brother, uh, Pastor Pius encouraged us that every three, three hours, just set aside 15 minutes, go to a corner. If you cannot pray one hour stretch, but at least every three hours, go to a corner, do 10 minutes, do five minutes. Just remind God why you are fasting. You cannot be doing all of that. You cannot be doing all of that and you don't believe this God you are doing it unto. You don't trust him. The prayer points you have presented, are you, do you believe that God will do them? Or they just say we should write a list, I've written it. Do you believe indeed that he is the only God? Do you believe that he is the only one who can do it? You know, I remember in 2001 or was it 2002? 2002. 2002 or probably early 2003 because I know Deborah was not one year old yet or maybe she was just a little over one year. This girl fell sick. The best hospital in Abuja then was the National Hospital. It was still top range then. Right? And best doctors, best specialists, everything. But they just couldn't figure out what was wrong with this girl. All the tests came back, nothing is wrong. But this child was not well. D team upon team, doctor upon doctor, they kept changing, try, you know. When doctors get to the point where they, they start saying, I think, let us try, you know the case is bad. Because doctors are not supposed to be thinking. They are supposed to do a test and get an indication of what is wrong. And that's what they should be treating. I'll be a doctor. When a doctor starts saying, I think, let us try, be careful. But they had gotten to that stage. So it became trial and error. And the more they did trial and error, the more of error it was. Until it got to the point that my daughter swole up like four times her size. I'm not kidding you. So just imagine a child. And then you come the next morning, right? Not even, not the next morning, within a few hours. This child became three times as in swole up three times, four times her size. And we were first time parents. All of our adult elders, if it was in Lagos, I would say, mommy, come oh, uh, mother-in-law, come oh, you call auntie, come oh. And it was just the two of us. Never had children before. We have never seen this kind of trouble before. We have never experienced this kind of trouble before. We looked at the child. The child was swollen in our very presence. After three weeks, we had spent like three weeks in the hospital. Diagnosis, everything was okay, but this child was not well. And then to worsen it, the child now, due to some medical malpractice or error, later we learned that the drip, they didn't set it, they set it too fast. So a drip that should have gone in like eight hours went in about 30 to about one hour. So the child filled up. <laughs> So at that point, at that point, where it was obvious that only God can intervene for this child not to die, I told the doctors, remove all the drip. 
Stop every treatment. Don't do anything more. Just leave her here. Don't do any treatment again. And at the same time, our current uh, provincial pastor, Pastor Kuli Omotosho, was the pastor of Central Parish in Abuja then. And they were running 70, it was some, maybe 70 nights, 70 days night vigil. I knew of that program before, but I didn't have a need to go there because I didn't have a need. <laughs> but when hospital had failed, the best consultants in the at least in that vicinity, had failed. They had exhausted all their options. It was all tending towards a terrible outcome. I remember there's this nightly program. So my wife, of course, she was permanently with the baby at her bedside in the hospital. I would rush to work, come back, go home, pick this, pack, pick that for three weeks. And then at night, I remember that they're doing this program. So instead of going home to sleep, I went to the vigil. And then I presented my case. That, see, my daughter is in the hospital. I don't even know if by the time I go tomorrow morning to see them, whether she will still be alive. I need God to come true. Tell somebody I need God to come true. And do you know what? <laughs> I think by the time I came the next morning, I got to the bed she wasn't there. My first heart beat was, ah! Guess, guess, eh? But you know what? It was not because she had died. It was not because her situation got worse. It was because she had become so well that a child that could not even lift hand, she had gotten out of her bed and was running riot around the hospital. Why do I need to tell this story? I just want to build up somebody's faith that there are certain situations you will encounter in 2022 where you will need to draw a line in the sand. Eh? And hey, oh, I grew up in northern Nigeria. There is a way we used to dare each other. We will draw a line on the ground. Say so if they burn you well, cross that line. I don't know who, who played that kind of challenge. But back then, when you want to show somebody superiority, you draw a line. You draw a line and say, for those who don't understand, <laughs> those who don't understand Nigerian English, we say, if you are truly the child of your father and mother, I dare you to cross that line. And of course, that's when the battle line is drawn. This year, I perceive that many of us have not become violent enough with our situations. We have not become violent enough with Satan and his agents. That's why they are toying with us. By the time you draw that line, tell your neighbor, you need to draw the line this year. You need to draw the line. As in, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You get the point I'm making? You need to draw the line. I say, I dare you, cross. If it is a situation, it must bow. If it is a person, let them go and prepare their obituary because they will die. There's no pity this year. There's no pity. There is no pity. Brethren, like I said, I'm just here to get you angry in the spirit this morning. There are situations that will not be resolved until you get angry. Like they say in Nigeria, open eye. You know that's the way you talk like a gentleman. You know, and it happens to me a lot these days. After coming from here, where we don't shout too much, you know, and then you get back to even sometimes from the airport, you are talking like a gentle person, but they want to be stupid. And at some point, you are holding it back, you are sucking it in. But at some point, that gas valve is just increasing and increasing until you change from... Hey, gentlemen, I say, Una de Chris, you know, there is a way I see the reaction. When you switch from cold mode to hot mode, you will see the enemy too will jump back. You, you know how I, I, I don't know who has ever, but, ah, gentlemen, I'm talking like a gentleman since morning. You people are not listening. What's wrong with you? You want me to show you that me too, I know people in this land. Then you start with you. What's your name? Give me your name and service number. When you say that, they know that this one knows what he's saying. 
Say, no, no, don't cover your name badge. You are not wearing name badge. Are you supposed to be? That's when you become their boss. Are you supposed to be at this point without having a name badge? I want to see you wear your name badge. Say, oh, God, relax. There's no problem. I say, there is a problem. Put on your name badge. Who is the senior, most senior person here? They will be wondering, who is this person? Who is it? I'm not, you know, it's all Shakara. They don't even, I'm like, who, I want to speak to your boss. Oh, God, relax. Who are you? You don't need to know who I am. I want to speak to your boss. You know, when you change the music, this year you must change the music for Satan. Because, ah, as somebody who has been bullied before in my life, I remember when I was in um, secondary school, there was one of my classmates that bullied me from form one, form two, then in form three. By that time, me too, I had gained some stature. I was among the youngest in my, in my class, so they were playing with me. But by form three, I had also built some muscles. Even though I was young, my stature was catching up with some of them. I could look at some people and say, ah, we are almost the same height now. Right? And then there was this very terrible one that was very bullish. But that day, he crossed the line. He had, I mean, my mate, oh, he would give me a plate to go and wash. From one, from two, I would wash it. It was that bad. Then in, and anywhere he comes across me in the corridor, he must harass me, even if it's for 10 seconds before going wherever he's going. Ah! So that particular day, I still remember, I can picture it. If you, you remember, chemistry lab was the only upstairs in our school then. Right? I remember, I was in 3B, he was in 3C. And he would wait for me to come out of 3B door, waiting to bully me. Ah! So this particular day, he cornered me as usual. And I was wondering, is this slap today or punch in the stomach? What is he going to do? But he did the wrong thing. I don't know how the argument went, the discussion went, where he abused my mother. Oh boy. He crossed the line. I wasn't thinking. I didn't plan it. But he crossed the line. Maybe he called my mother a prostitute or he said something. He just said something bad about my mother that twisted my brain. Temporarily, I went insane. And before I knew it, I delivered a slap. And when I delivered the slap, I saw fear in the face of the oppressor. That split second, where I was waiting for heaven and hell to fall, but I saw fear. I gave him three years beating in one day. You know what happened? Three years beating. From one, from two, and part of from three, up to the point that he abused my mother, I descended on him and exacted three years' punishment in one day. Meaning that the years that the caterpillar and the canker worm had taken, not only did I redeem myself for going forward, but I recovered the past bullying I beat all in one day. That's going to be your portion. But what I'm saying is, you must get so angry that you will draw a line. And you'll be as angry as me that you will be so insane. You'll be doing things that people, other people cannot understand because it will look insane to them. You will challenge people that other people are afraid of. Because I wasn't the only one who was bullying, by the way. We were a group of younger people to him that he was bullying. But the day I liberated myself, every other person too got the courage to liberate themselves. So the kind of liberation that God is going to bring through you is not going to be for you alone. It's going to be a multi-generational, a, a, a peer-to-peer. It will be everybody related with you will know that something has happened. Praise God. I had scripture to preach, oh. But this is the way the Holy Spirit is leading. I just want the understanding to sink. But is it, is it sinking yes. that this year we need to be angry? Holy anger. The type that says, if I be a man of God, let fire fall and consume you and your 50. This is not the year to be a gentleman. In fact, that song, fella song is coming to my head. I forget the man, but he said, I know be gentleman at all, lo. Tell the devil. Enough. Yes, please sit down. Ah, <laughs> sit down. I'm so sorry. I am sorry. But today, you can see that I'm angry. 
The devil needs to know that enough is enough. But brethren, for you to be able to make those kind of declarations, there needs to be an altar that is speaking in your behalf. There needs to be what? An altar speaking on your behalf. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Verse, um, let's start from, let's start from 22. No, let's, let's start from uh, 21. Let's start from 21. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver? Hobbling between two opinions. If the Lord is God, follow him. If whatever else you represent as God in your life is God, then follow that one. If Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. I pray that you people will not be silent. At least we have not been silent. We have declared already. We have declared already that we believe you are the only God. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. It doesn't matter the size of the opposition. If you are a Bible scholar, you know that one angel of God dispatched on your behalf. And by the way, angels are ministering spirits to we, the children of salvation. One angel at least took care of 185,000 soldiers, not civilians. 185,000 soldiers. Only one angel was able to deal with them. I'm sure there's nobody here. If you have 185,000 enemies, we need to be afraid of you yourself. <laughs> Abi, if there's anybody here who has up to 185,000 enemies, you yourself, you must be an enemy. We need to be afraid. But one angel could take care of 185,000 uh, enemies, which means that if you are in the right standing with God and you just command, because angels are ministering spirits to we, they are supposed to be at our beck and call. And I know Pastor Kayo did justice to teach us the ministry of angels last year. This is the time to bring all that knowledge. You need to command your angels. My angels, stop sleeping. Rise up and go to work. There are some angels that we need to report to God this year. Because it is the reliction of duty on their parts. If certain things are going wrong in our lives. The Bible says... He will give his angels charge over you such that you will not dash your foot against the stone. So this year, 2022, if you are walking and your leg even mistakenly hit stone, you should not take it lightly. You should say, my angel, are you sleeping? Wake up. Ha! This year, you have to be crazy in a good way. Like, it's not a play. It's not rehearsal anymore. This has gone on for too long. Things have to change. What did this do? Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar. 24. Then call on the name of your God and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed. 25. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it and call on the name of your God, but do not set fire to the wood. 26. So they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, Oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. Then they danced, hobbling around the altar they had made. 27. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You will have to shout louder. He scoffed. This man is carambulous like me. For surely he is a god. Perhaps he's daydreaming or he's relieving himself. Or maybe he's away on a trip or he's asleep and needs to be wakened. So they shouted louder. And following their normal custom, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. Ha. They raped all your enemies. They will wound themselves this year. 
They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. Then Elijah called to the people, Come and see what the Lord has done. Come over here. They all crowded around him. But what did he do first? He repaired the altar. Unfortunately, we don't have paper Bibles anymore. I will have said underline that one. Highlight it in your text. Because that's the key to everything that happened here. Was what? They repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. They did what? They repaired the altar of the Lord that had been torn down. If you are going to be honest with yourself or as honest with yourself as I am being honest with myself, there are too many altars that we have despised, that we have torn down. There were things we used to do back in the days that we no longer do. There was a way that we, we, we did the, the things of God with fear and reverence that now we have taken things What's going to be going to be? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God is not that difficult. Ah, uh ah, -uh, relax. Uh -uh. We need to what? Rebuild and repair the altars that have been torn down. That is one critical thing that we must do in 2022. You must do a self-examination and identify where you drop the ball. You need to go retrace your steps and rebuild that altar that has been torn down. 31. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel. So, in the case of Elijah, it was not about me, it's about the kingdom of God. Right? It was not about him, it was about the kingdom of God. So this year, another thing you need to do is have a kingdom mindset. This success that I'm chasing, is it just for me so I can buy a Maserati? What exactly is the motive? Who is supposed to get the glory? This thing that I'm desperately asking God for this year, what is the motive for desperately needing it? In his case, it was the kingdom of God. He represented the 12 tribes of Israel with those 12 stones. But can I flip it and say there are 12 months in a year. Can you propose to erect an altar for every month of 2022? It's a possibility, right? To say in this month of January, I, I, I establish an altar of worship. In the month of February, it is an altar of sacrifice. In the month of March, it's an altar of thanksgiving. And so on and so on. But you are conscious. Because what is an altar? An altar is a place where heaven and earth meet. Hmm? Where the physical and the spiritual interact is an altar. There are good altars, there are evil altars. But everyone must have an altar. Because if an altar is speaking against your life, and you don't have an altar to respond, <laughs> You'll be a collateral damage of uh, warfare. Because the battle is the battle of the gods. So in this case, he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Not in his own name. In the name of the Lord. Then he dug a trench around the altar large enough to hold about three gallons. Yep. He piled wood on the altar, cut the bull into pieces. So he did everything in order. It was not haphazard. This year you cannot afford to go through the year you cannot worship God in a haphazard way. It has to be intentional. Tell your neighbor it's intentional. Your worship of God this year has to be intentional. Then he said, fill four large jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. After they had done this, he said, do the same thing again. And when they were finished, he said, do it a third time. So they did it. Now, let's put this story in context. For those of us Bible scholars, you know that prior to this time, Elijah had fled, right? He fled from uh, Ahab and uh, uh, Jezebel. 
He fled. But before he fled, he shut the heaven. Right? So three years, no rain. Shut the heaven. And when there's no rain for three years, what's the first thing that will be scarce? Water. So, if you get the context of what is happening here, that pouring of water on the altar was the highest level of sacrifice. You agree with me? If there's droughts, the only thing people are looking for in drought is water. That's the most precious commodity in a drought, water. And so, Elijah here was not giving what was cheap. He was the highest level of sacrifice in drought is water. Now he says, pour water. He didn't pour it sparingly once. Pour it again. Pour it. That's, here is water for God the Father. Here is water for God the Son. Here is water for God the Holy Spirit. All three of you take your water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, on that altar that you are repairing this year, can I tell you something? You need to be ready to sacrifice some things that cost you a lot. I don't know what is so precious to you that you cannot let go of. But this year, God will be speaking to you about certain things. It could be something you are doing. It could be, I mean, for the longest time, I thought it's not, you know, how we have all become so addicted to, 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 to apps and, uh, and, and uh, all this social media thing. You wake up first thing in the morning and even before you pray, first thing your reflex is to do like this and catch your phone and see how many notices of email or whatever is there. But some situations arose for me that made me to decide, okay, I deleted Instagram. Guess what? I didn't die. Then following that, I asked myself, what's the use of Facebook, Seth? I quietly, you know, there's a place. I said, the only thing I will miss about Facebook is all my timelines from the previous years. And I realized there's a way you can download your pictures. So I downloaded all my pictures, and then I deleted Facebook too. <laughs> I've done it for the past one year now, and honestly, I'm not dead. I feel better. No Instagram. Can you picture your life in 2022? No Instagram, no Facebook. Don't you think you have a lot of time freed up? There will be less drama. Nothing to agitate your soul. I see the look on your face. You must catch up, Fabi. It is well. God will help us. But what am I saying? You need to identify your idol this year and cut it off. Sacrifice it later at the table. For some of you, it is sleep. Just like for me, it is sleep. I love to sleep. Some of you, is gluttony. You eat with reckless abandon. God will help you. God will help me. I hope I'm not shaking the table too much this morning. But we're trying to tell ourselves the truth. We cannot just let this year be just another year. Enough of playing Christianity and church. If God is God, let him be God. And let us rely on him. And let him prove himself in our lives. Let's draw the line. So, he sacrificed the most precious thing that was available in a drought, which is water. He didn't sacrifice it sparingly. He did it in abundance. And then what did he do? After he had done this, do the same thing. Yes, 35. 35. And the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. That means he gave an overflowing offering. At the usual time for offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed. He did what? He did what? Pray. I speak it loud now. Pray. He did what? Pray. Are you praying? Are you praying? But how did he pray? O oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
Whenever you see a prayer in the Bible start with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's about invoking the covenant. Right? Whenever you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob put together, it's about the covenant. It's a reminder to God about the covenants. Praise the Lord. So what covenants are guiding your life in 2022? At least, if you are a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the siege is over. If you are a member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, it's a season of fresh air. Right? And if you are a member of Desire of Nations, New York City, it is our season of... Speak it like you mean it now. Okay. So, at least those are minimum three covenants that should be ruling your life for 2022. So when you set up the altar, when you have sacrificed at the altar, when you have prayed at the altar, it's all with the intention of reminding God of the covenant over your life for 2022. Whatever other personal covenants you have with God, this is where to table it at the altar because the altar is a place of exchange. Praise the Lord. Prove today that you are God in Israel. Prove today that you are God in my life. Since your name is not Israel. You say, prove today that you are God in the life of Felix Rodriguez. The desire of my heart. That thing that we have connected that we know I need. God, you know I need it. I also know I need it. So when I pray, I'm presenting it. Prove that I have done all this at your command. 37. 37. Oh Lord, answer me. Answer me. Why? Not so that people will know that I'm the latest millionaire on the block. You are going to answer me so these people will know that you, oh Lord, are God. So my life should be a showcase for God in 2022. Now when people say, how did you do it? I say, it is God. It is God. Because if it is still the uh, McDonald's and... Uh, Dunkin' Donuts request you are presenting before God this year. That's what you can achieve with your paycheck. So don't kid us that it is God. Oh, and God, have you ever seen that? And God helped me, and I got $10 to go to McDonald's. Oh, anyway, for some children, it might be a prayer point. But what am I saying? This year, things that are beyond you. Ah, oh, you know, I think in my mother tongue, the right word to express what I want to say dropped in my head. But... I don't know how to. How do you say alasheju in English? Overdue. Oversabi. Like, ah, ah, you. This small you. Sister Chidi, if you tell me now you want to buy Maserati tomorrow. Amen. But for the fact that I know that you are a child of God, I will say, ah, bah, why don't you even start with the uh, range 2022? You know that's the kind of thing I'm saying, where if it's doable by you, it's, it's, it's not a big deal. But when it passes you, when it's beyond you, hey, that it's, when, it, when it becomes a controversy, what God in your life this year, what is going to do in your life this year should be a positive controversy. You know the type where God opened that man's eye and people that knew him before, is he the one? It looks like him and the man said, I am he. You know, in places where they knew you in a particular way before. Yeah, ah, people are wicked. When they want to describe somebody, ah, you know that sister now, that one that is always wearing, they, they know what your most common outfit is. That's what they used to describe you. I said, this year, your enemies will be confused. They will be confused. Because transformation will happen that they will not know how else to describe you than to say, ah, you know that brother now, the one that drives the Maserati. I prefer that kind of appellation. Praise the Lord. So if God makes you a millionaire this year, you know the car I'm aiming for, huh? <laughs> Praise God. But what am I saying? We're rounding up now because we need to pray. I just pray to God that I have sown a seed in your heart this morning. That first you have to draw a line in the sand and say no more. Enough is enough. You need to get angry enough in your spirit that fear will not rule your life this year. Because like that time I 
I retrieved myself from that bully. It was the removal. The only thing that changed was that fear was removed from the equation. Right? Because prior to that day that I slapped him out of anger, I could have been able to beat him earlier than that. But fear held me back. But the minute that something triggered and the fear was taken out of the equation and was replaced with holy anger, what seemed impossible became possible. Somebody getting me? This year, fear will not rule your life. If God has laid it in your heart, God will not drop a thought in your heart if he thinks you cannot achieve it. So long as it's not contradictory to the word of God. If God says to you, for instance, now that you should go and uh, apply to become the CEO of a particular company, go ahead and do it. I'm a living testimony. I am a living testimony as to how God can disappoint man's knowledge, their permutations and calculations, and decide to choose a David out of the brothers. He can ignore Eliab and choose David. I remember 2001, the turning point of my life till this point. Of course, there had been sacrifice before it. Those of you who know me well will remember I've told that story before. How when we're going into the year 2000, at that time it's as if the whole world will end on 1st of January 2000. And everything was new millennium, new millennium. And the only thing that was in my mind was I told God, I said, God, I cannot go into the new millennium with this poverty. Enough is enough. I need my situation to change in the new millennium. And as of that time, my little level of faith in Christianity, I said, what offering? All I knew that time, my pastors and those who discipled me, because I gave my life just a year before that, the real, real final giving of life, not the up and down one. So I do the school one. Every time they show Bonnie Hell, everybody will come, give your life, and then you go back again. So anyway, so in that infancy of Christianity and the innocence of my heart, I said, I keep hearing 100 full return, 100 full return. I say, so if I want to become a millionaire in the new uh, n- millennium, what's 100, 1 million divided by 100, how much do I need to give? Huh? 10,000. I needed to give God 10,000 naira. It was a lot of money back then. But I needed to do a sacrifice of 10,000. Sow a seed of 10,000 naira so that I can at least get 1 million naira return in the new millennium. <laughs> that was the fate. Very rugged, very. So I did what? I was unemployed at the time, but I, Christmas was coming. So I I collected money from this one, collected money from that one, collected money from that one, and raised broilers. And I did the calculation such that by the time I sold the broilers, the profit was around that 10,000 I was looking for. And God so protected my broilers. Hey, you should have seen those broilers. They were the biggest in our neighborhood. People were fighting to buy my broilers. Without marketing, they were fighting. Where did you get this big broiler? And the mortality rate, if you have ever done poultry, you can come one morning and all of them are dead. My own, the normal loss rate was like 5%. I lost only three. And because of that, when you buy, they give you additional five. If you order 100, they will give you 105. Because they know that it's a normal loss, they called it. I think I lost only three. So I had my 100 plus, even additional two. So they didn't, in fact, God was in that business because it was a covenant business. Tell your person, your business this year must be a covenant business. So my chicken did not die. And then up to that point in my life, I kid you not, I was already 29 at this point. I had never handled at the same time, this is 10,000 that is all mine. Uh -uh. So when I finally got that seed, I had the, I had already made the covenant. Then the money now came, then temptation set in. Ah, are you sure it's God that laid this day? Ah, all this money, all mine? Ah, it was a hard struggle, but painfully. When I finished doing it, I was left penniless again. But that morning, 1st of January 2000, I can still picture myself. It looked crazy. My church was building at the time. There are permanent sites. So I went to the woman selling cement. 
I say, I want to buy 10,000 naira worth of cement. The woman will look, you know how they will relook you because they know you're in the neighborhood. Where is, you know, where is, Ojaleni, I said, did you go and rob somebody? But anyway, I said, I'm paying cash. I'm not asking for credit. I got equivalent bags of cement for 10,000. First day of the millennium, first January 2000, the wheelbarrows were following me into the church compound. And I went and offloaded the cement there. It was a painful process, God, but I dropped it at your feet. That was the turning point of my life. That same year, I'd been looking for work. I would go lead the interview. They would not call me back again. That year, I started working. Six months later, I joined the British Council. Two years later, I joined the United Nations. And it's been upward, 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 upward since then. Why? But there was one afternoon before that where I was so angry. After I'd done the sacrifice, so in January 1, nothing happened in January, nothing happened in February, nothing happened in March, nothing happened in June. One afternoon in July, I think it was July 19, 2000, if I'm right. It was a Thursday. I was in the living room. Everybody had gone to work as usual, and I was shabashing around the house. And then a crazy thought entered my head, and I screamed to heaven. I don't know if it was blasphemy or if it was a normal thing to do or if I was running mad. I said, God, they said you are the king of kings and the lord of lords, and I'm supposed to be your child. God, do I look like a priest? I can still remember that holy anger that afternoon. That was my exact words. They say you are the king of kings, and I'm your child. God, do I look like a prince? That same day, my elder brother, he was cutting his, uh, his fiancée, Uche, then. I was living in the same flat with him. He wasn't looking for work for me, but he was looking for work for his fiancée, who had just finished her master's in international law and diplomacy in Unilag then. So he was going around. I was living in his house. He was giving me pocket money. He wasn't looking for work for me. He was looking for work for his uh, fiancée. I don't blame him. I would do the same thing. I understand it better now. But then it was angering to me that, ah, bros, you know, try at all. But anyway, because God was in my matter, where he was looking for work for his fiancée, they say, oh, we don't need that, but we need an accountant. They remember, oh, I have a brother at home who read accounting. <laughs> so that was how it was. That without writing application, Without even really attending an interview, they called. He got back home and said, get dressed tomorrow. We're going to the island together. So I thought it's one of those things where he wants me to help him do some bank, uh, bank runs, and then he will give me pocket money to return home when I finish. He said, no, dress well, oh. <laughs> so I had to dress well. And then there was this group called the Negotiation and Conflict Management Group. It was headed by Justice Eshaw. I mean, it launched me into a new realm of connections. Opened my eyes to possibilities. And it was while doing that for six months that the British Council advertised. And because I'd done that for six months, very easily I got that job. And guess what? Me, that 1,000 used to be my problem. Eh? By 2001, February, this same me, I dropped 200,000 naira, not to buy house or buy land, to rent apartment in Abuja. So you can tell what has happened in my life between, for me to drop, those of you who know Nigerian currency, then I'm talking of 2001, 200,000. That's when even a federal director in Nigerian government was earning like 30,000 per month. So even director salary for one year, was what I used to drop for my first rent. That's what God had done. I want you to rise to your feet. I'm telling this so that you can be challenged. That these things work. God is real. Set up an altar. Repair the altar of God this year. When you have repaired that altar, pray. Draw the line. Challenge your situations. Don't be timid before God this year. Remind concerning the works of my hands. Remind me. Is that not what God said? He says when you give your tithe, when you give your offering, challenge me and see if I will not open the windows of heaven. This year you have to be intentional. You have to cut a covenant with God. I don't know what you are going to enter into covenant with God with. In my case it was if you do this 10,000, I'm going to give it all to you and I did. 
And just like an Isaac that died, but I'm telling you, the, the div- I can't tell you, the dividends of that, that you can't, I, I can't even quantify the fold of returns. Because God turned me from being an embarrassment to his kingdom to the point that he blessed me to the point that I'm a blessing to others. I can't tell how many times I will just go and come back. Before I come, I will come back and see one car is missing. That's madam. She can give away things without consulting. I will just travel and come back and look. Ah, what happened? She must, is the car the mechanic? He said, no, I've dashed somebody. That's the level to which God blessed us. Not one, not several. Eh? It takes God intervening in your matter for you to move from that position where you are the one looking for welfare to the one that is doing things effortlessly. I pray for you this year. God will launch you into a realm of ease in 2022. But that ease will only come when you get angry in your spirit. When you rebuild the altar. When you begin to pray. When you begin to sacrifice. When you begin to what? Call upon. You have to make a demand. When you go to an altar, you cannot just go and say anything. Uh -uh. People who go to altars, they know what they have come there for, right? If you have been watching movies, at least when they go to altar, they come there with, I need this. Then the altar will say, give me this. Abby? And they will get what they want. So this year, you have to be intentional about your Christianity. So I want us to just begin to speak to God. Say, God, help me to identify those places where my altar has broken down. Help me, O oh Lord. Those areas where I have neglected my altar, help me to identify them and rebuild my altar. Father, on that altar, let prayer never cease this year. Let prayer never cease this year. Eternal rock of ages, open my eyes to see every opposition where I need to draw a line and call upon the forces of heaven to take care of situations for me. Help me, Lord. Let your fire fall. Because if you read that First Kings chapter 18 to the end, at the end of all of that, Fire fell from heaven, consumed the sacrifice. And not only that, all the opposition, the 450 prophets of Baal, they were killed. I pray for you this year that God will answer you by fire. God will answer you by fire. God will answer you by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus, where you have been defeated before, where you have been afraid like Elijah before, the Lord will give you boldness. It takes a boldness for you to reappear in a place where you had been running away before. All of a sudden, you are bold enough to appear and say, King Ahab, come, meet me at Mount Carmel. Oh, let every situation of your life let them meet you at the place of the altar. Challenge your situation. Ah, Elijah could have said, come and meet me at River Jordan. No. He knew where his power source was. Don't fight in the public space. Challenge the situation to meet you at the altar. Every situation that is opposing you, opposing your life this year, bring them to the altar of God. Bring them to the altar of God. And the God who reigns over all the affairs of men will answer on your behalf. Father, we just want to thank you. Lord, we worship you and we adore you. We say be glorified forever, Lord. In Jesus' almighty name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, I just want to thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for using me to speak to your people. Lord, you alone be glorified. I pray, Lord, from the depth of my heart that this year, this year, you said, gather unto me, my saints, who have entered into a covenant with me by sacrifice. Father, Lord, please gather your children together. Help them to cut covenants with you. Help them, O oh Lord, to approach the altar. And so come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help for times of need in the mighty name of Jesus. Let 2022 be a different year for good. Let us have testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to erect the right altars, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us the right motive. Empower us, O oh Lord. Defeat all our enemies. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' almighty name, we have prayed.